Life is better now that I found you. Yes, that is Q-Tip featuring Nora Jones. Some solid hip-hop music for you. And now we've got international personality model extraordinaire. We've got Kate Alexander on the phone with us. What's good? Hello there. Thank you for that introduction. <laughs> Pow, pow, pow. Excited to, uh, to do this interview. It's, you know, I, I do a lot of, a lot of hip hop stuff on here. So mostly just doing the hip hop artists, but I like to just get it into talks with like everybody else that's out there doing, you know, what they love to do and following their dreams. And you are someone I notice always out there, you know, posting positive stuff and traveling around and, and following your dreams. So I definitely wanted to get a chance to talk to you. Oh, I really, I really appreciate you having me on tonight. Um, I, I know this is more of a hip hop channel, but it's, uh, it's great just to know people like you, and uh, thank you for asking me. No doubt, no doubt. And yeah, you know what? With hip hop, models go hand in hand with hip hop, one hundred percent. I think. Uh, don't we all know that? Yeah, I mean, the <laughs> rap videos in my life. Yeah, the hip hop world is filled with with models, so it definitely goes hand in hand. And I know a lot of the people that are listening uh, to the show will definitely be going and, and checking out your websites and your your Facebook pages and all that stuff too. So it's oh, good. Oh, well, thank you so much definitely getting it out there for sure but uh yeah so talk a little bit about um you know your your journey through this uh how long ago like when was the first time that you did like your first modeling shoot uh i've been in the entertainment industry since i was about seven years old i started off uh doing a lot of theater work and i ended up getting a uh, scouting for modeling when i was about uh, 13, 14, uh, models tend to start really young, and I got approached, you know, typical story, everyone, everyone's heard this before, uh, in a mall, here's your card, you kind of go, who's this person, uh, what, what's all this, and uh, we went and we checked it out, and it turned out to be something legit, and my, you know, mom and I at that time, because I wasn't driving or anything, used to come into Toronto, where I am uh, right now, actually, um, and I did, I signed with an agency there, and then everything sort of sort of took off at that point. But uh, I remember my first shoot, and I was yeah, it's it's a bit nerve wracking. You you, mm-hmm. you don't you don't know what you're doing yet. You, you you're awkward in your body. You're 14. You're 15. You're like, oh my goodness, I have to be this this thing, sexy, whatever. And um, it, it definitely takes a little, bit of a, a little bit of time to get used to. But now it's like, oh, selfie? What? <laughs> so, yeah, no, and I took a little time off uh, to go to university. And now I'm full-fledged international and traveling all over the place. Uh, super fun, and I wouldn't have it any other way. So that's great that's great that's an awesome story just getting uh you know being able to get discovered uh just like that and getting signed onto an agency and in in the model world that's kind of like once that's like getting signed to a record label right it's like basically once you're on that agency they're able to book you gigs able to to get you you know different photo shoots and stuff like that that start building your portfolio and uh and kind of take things off for you there's, there's a little bit of that it's um you have to do your research. That's what I, you know, I get all these questions all the time. How do I get into the industry? The industry, you know, the model, modeling industry, I can, I can speak for the music industry a little bit, but the modeling industry is, you know, it's pretty particular. Like, you have to be a certain height, have a certain build. It definitely caters to a very, you know, like the professional side of it caters to a really small, like, I guess, genetic lottery winning thing. And it's, it's one of the, it's, it's, it's a weird industry from that standpoint, but, um, you know, if you're working with the right people, you can, you definitely build a great career. And I've been thankful. Yeah. You know, I've worked, I've been through, you know, the scams and the things like that. And there, it, it definitely exists. Um, but it, signing with the right, right management makes all the difference. Like it, it makes or breaks your career. So, and I'm lucky right now that like my management and my agents are just, uh, some of the best people that I know, to be honest. So it's, it's good. That's great. That's great. It's good to have good people in your circle for sure. And and just like the music industry, there's a lot of snakes in the model industry and a lot of people that are just out to take advantage of you and, uh, you know, shady deals and 
you know, trying to trying to get this and that out of you and, and not really providing what they had promised originally and stuff like that. Same thing kind of happens in the hip hop world. And it's, you gotta, you gotta be, you know, have your wits about you to be able to nav- navigate the waters and see, you know, which are the people that you can trust and who's good to work with and who's not. And to be able to catch those vibes off people instantly when you get a chance to meet them and be like, okay, uh, this is, feels right. And something is horribly wrong with this thing. So yeah, it's good that you've got a chance to navigate that and find the people that are you know that are definitely going to be helping you and beneficial for your career well you definitely nailed it on the head trust your gut like it's it's one of those things if people are asking for money up front and all these things you give them their money they're going to pocket it you know Mm -hmm. it's 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 that simple um agencies open and close in toronto like in all over the place like like nobody's business but the thing is the nice part about you know the social media world and uh, the internet that we have nowadays is you can ask those questions and you have you know the Better Business Bureau and you know ACTRA and all these other all these other unions and all these other you know per- people run systems that can give you and provide you with information but you know who's right and who's legit and who's actually going to you know who can actually make your career and it's you know the same thing like I- I've been around because of modeling obviously i've done music videos i've been around those artists you know i do my own writing um and everything and getting once that's ready out for publication i'm just going to go through the same the same system that a lot of you know people who want to be models go through you know you, you ask other people you who have done what you want to do and who have been successful at what you want and that you know do your research that's 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 all I that's all I can say. So smart, so smart. The recipe is out there because the people have done it before, and it's so simple. People don't recognize that formula. I remember reading a a book very long ago when I was first starting rapping, and it was called "I Don't Need a Record Deal." And that was one of the things that it was mentioning was like, people are already out there that have done what you want to do. All you got to do is talk to them and ask them how they did it. Exactly, because they'll simple. have something, and, you know. It, and like you said, it's really the recipe is out there. It's really, it's much more simple, unfortunately, than you know a lot of people like to make it. It's it's complicated even once you're in there doing it professionally. But getting started and getting those doors open, there, there's good and there's bad, and there's not really you know much in between there and you find what's right for you and if you are serious about your career you better find serious people to work with and those people do exist and they've they've been around and they won't lie to you and they won't you know pull the wool over your eyes or anything like that so yeah definitely find a mentor you know i i, I always say that if if in in anything and in, in, forget the entertainment industry just uh in anything in life, you know, if you want to be a teacher, professor, or what, or what have you, um, find someone who, who's done what you want to do, and they'll already have all of the, the bad experiences and the bad knocking on other people's doors, and they'll tell you what doors to avoid, so... Definitely. I love trying to do that as well as, you know, in the industry, any time people ask me, you know, oh, is this guy a good person to work with or that person, uh, just working with them in the past, I'm able to provide a good answer. Like, yeah, that guy, great guy to work with. This guy stay away from definitely. And there's people like that in the industry for sure. So you got to navigate the waters and, and, and know what's good and, and what's not good for you. One thing I wanted to talk about though, you were mentioning there about the, uh, the genetic lottery. And this is something that, uh, you know, is it's very apparent in the model world that it's a very small, um, small category of women that you see in these magazines. And typically it's always, um, you know, very thin, uh, slender and generally always white. Like there's not many black models in the entertainment industry and, this is something that like, I, I remember hearing the numbers cause I always, I'm always watching Ted talk videos. And I remember watching this one video of this girl that was a model and she was like talking about modeling and stuff. And she said, there's, I think it's 5%. Miss Cameron Russell. Yes. Uh, she's a Victoria's secret model. And, um, she, uh, I've done a lot of research, and I'm actually I'm reading a bunch of books on this right now. I read a book called Pricing Beauty. Uh, read a book on the uh, what's it called, uh, the survival of the prettiest, and uh, one that's called Deluxe. They're based on luxury, you know, what, what where luxury is at this point in the world. And yeah, uh, Cameron, I'm gonna you know paraphrase her a little bit. Uh, she goes on to say that you know 
there is such a small percentage of um, you know multi race uh, models in in the world, and a lot of them have you know what we would measure typically as Caucasian features or European features, um, just the proportions of their face. Uh, it is changing. Uh, even myself, like I tend to be, I'm not necessarily super super thin. Um, I have more of what they would like to call a lingerie body. I'm contracted with Wonder Bra and that kind of thing. Um, but uh, the the industry standard is, is changing. You know, you'll see shorter models now. You'll see a greater diversity. You'll see a lot of androgynous models, um, mm-hmm. uh, tran- transgender, what have you. But, yeah, it's it's definitely been, and it, it comes from history. You look at society and you look at all of these things that, you know, have occurred within history and wars and everything, and uh, it, it it's just creating coming out of that that old mold mm-hmm. that we have and winning the genetic law. It, it's it, it you know I'm not going to say that it doesn't exist. It still exists. Like I happen to be five eleven, thin naturally, and I am Caucasian. So it. I won that that one percent of the population that you know has my build and my bone structure, and that's something you know that I, I've I've grappled in within myself. It's like okay, so I've won this, and I'm I'm definitely exploiting it for you know travel and for my job. And I'm I how do I feel about fitting into the ideal of you know what what society wants and mm-hmm. and what it had. What is what does it mean to have my face be the face that people want to ob- obtain to? I I don't I don't know how I feel about that because I see so many flaws in me, um, and this is something that like I like to say is like I I am more of a personality I I believe than than as a face you know one hundred percent there there you know I always try and convey that message is that you know this career will not last me the rest of my life. This is not something that I can do forever. This is something that I can do in a small, um, in a small time frame. And so I better use this as something that I can, you know, do to go on in my life and do other things with and create other things and see, you know, I'm, I'm thankful enough to be with a management company that, um, has you know girls who are five seven or you know guys who are too tall there's that that stereotype exists there some guys can't model because i have brothers who are you know six seven they could never be models uh because they they're, they're too tall for the industry it's this 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 standard that no one really wrote but everyone sort of follows it very interesting subject i you know I, I'll, I'll be honest and say yeah it's it's one of those things that how do you answer those questions? You know, what what is beauty? And so now, again, I'll bring up the social media thing with they're, you know, on the Dove campaigns, they're bringing out, you know, plus, real people and real same. images. But, you know, being a model is not easy. You you travel all over the world. You're constantly away from people. You never know where you're going. You never know what's happening. It's it's not it's not as it's not as glamorous as they like to think it is. But I I'm happy um, that the industry has now more more so embraced this natural beauty, and you see it goes through fluxes, and you know sometimes thin is really in, and now it's in more of like a, okay, the natural this is this is unhealthy, you know. At the end of the day, to put that much pressure on people, it's it's an interesting, interesting subject, which I'm not sure they're you know black and white to use a really terrible pun, but um, yeah, I, I it, it's becoming more diverse. Yeah, it's it's a really big big topic of discussion, I think, and so so crucial to society as a whole when it comes down to just women. I feel are can be so cruel to each other as far as like their looks and stuff like that. Whereas guys, like I don't know when I I've got some plus size friends and stuff like that, and I've never once been like on them about like yo, you should try and like fix that up and stuff. But I've heard girls like in conversations together, like um, you know, you should probably like sit in the gym more and stuff like that. Like it, or like you know what I mean? Like they'll just they're more conscious of their bodies and their body types, and it's because of the image that's portrayed in the media of this is what is supposed to be the perfect standard and stuff and then people are not able to be happy with themselves 
I totally agree. And you know what? And this is something that, uh, as a model and someone who's, I guess, what you would call a professionally beautiful or what have you, but um, they, when I'm feeling the best about myself, when I'm healthy, when I'm happy, when I'm, you know, doing all those things, that's when I feel the most beautiful, regardless of what I'm wearing or regardless of how much makeup I have on. And I think you really hit it on the head, like, you know, discussing the girls. The girls need to stop tearing each other apart about these things. And I yeah. think that comes, that in itself, again, is coming from an old blueprint that we have for society about women being beautiful and how much pressure, you know, like the old, courtesan and like that that kind of like that women have just have that to offer and, and that's what they should be primarily focused on and um, it, it's great to feel good about yourself but that doesn't you know live how you want to live and be beautiful how you want to be beautiful and i like where society's going in it but it you know it, it's gonna take a long time to get those things off but i i yeah i totally agree support each other and going to the gym and being healthy mm-hmm but not, oh, you need to lose 10 pounds so that you fit into a size six. Like, it, it, I, it, I, think, I think that's crazy. And, you know, I, some, some of my good friends, you know, ha, are, they're not models, you know. They're, they're, not, they're not a typical fashion model. And what I, you don't, you just, they have their own beauty and they have their own offerings. And there's, your definition of beauty shouldn't be based on something that's societal no and i think it's the flaws and the imperfections that create the true beauty in people it's this is something that me and mocha were talking about earlier in our interview with when it comes to music and stuff too is just like um the imperfect perfection of people and you know that those flaws being what makes people special and makes them unique and stuff like that you know what i mean if for instance um like everyone knows like Marilyn Monroe with like her mole or something like that on her face that became like her signature like thing you know what I mean well there's a gap like there's a model um Laura Stone I believe and she has a gap tooth and like she's gap tooth that, that, that that's an interesting thing about my line of work is that nowadays they're looking for those girls with that one little feature that you know might just not be her nose a little bit to the left or you know eyes different color or something it's coming out and appreciating appreciating those things and you know what 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 is, what is a flaw what is you know what would it, it, it's such an interesting thing that you know sometimes some people might find, society might find something so imperfect about you or you know someone people may comment on that but that might also be you know someone else's favorite part about you that that's yes. just subjective and um you know, a strange thing. So again, it's it's just all about really being yourself. And and I look at it, you know, in my in my perspective. And I always always blondes in my industry, you know, tend to be bombshells, and they tend to you know get away with you know being heavier or or those things just because they're blonde. It's, it goes back again to that you know old societal blueprint. And um, I. Kind of go well. I'm not a blonde. <laughs> Where can I work? I'm I'm never going to be blonde. It's just not going to work for me. So, yeah. what do I have to offer? <laughs> Where can I go? And I, uh, I ended up working in India for six months because blondes don't work well in India. It's yeah, not they're what, they, what they dark, look for, yeah, you know. For and sure. so I go where I will fit best, yeah. you know, Milan or, you know, Germany or somewhere that in- embraces I guess my beauty because of my job or or whatever. But and that and that's something that I just urge, you know, especially younger girls and younger girls coming up in the industry because I see it all the time. You know, you you get a, you know, a group of 15-year-old girls together who are all stunning and who have all been just signed and they and they're so, so excited but they're all eyeing each other up and down and already poking at each other's hip bones and you're just like what like can you you know really just take the time to realize that what you're selling is your look and and that but also your clients will remember you in castings based on your personality and based on how you talk to them and mm-hmm. how you treat people and that for me is you know, really what 
the industry is about, but people don't get to see that. And that's why, I, again, I'm really excited to be here just to talk because it people just assume, you know, you walk in and you're either beauty beautiful or not or they think that or you or you don't get to say anything and Mm -hmm. you know again with cameron russell coming out with the ted thing uh ted talk it's uh it's important to to talk about this industry the the other side that no one gets to see so it's it's crucial again (laughs) no no i I love talking like i want to just continue this for like an hour straight up with um but i we got to wrap up soon but i do want to get into this next uh next question i wanted to ask you about which leads exactly into what you were talking about there with this whole um issue of um attaching having a personality to the to the model and who the person is and stuff and this is something that um i think about because uh for stripping okay for strip clubs and stuff like that yeah um i have a couple friends that that do that and just having the conversations with them and they they tell me like um you know they feel like when they're in there they're not even a real person you know what i mean they're just a body and like an object of desire and and pleasure for for the male attraction or whatever right and yeah. And the same kind of feel and vibe, I think, goes along with modeling as well is just like you're this face, this body, this like sexual um, entity, you know, in this magazine or in this 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 spread or, you know, where 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 is where is the substance behind that? Where is where is the story behind that face? And. You know, that's something some people would be like, yo, you're corny as heck saying this stuff. But I'm straight up like I care about this kind of stuff because I don't want if I had a daughter and her to grow up in a world where, you know, all males just viewed her as a sex object or, or an object of desire and stuff like that. And like, I, I, I love the model industry. I think it's amazing and it's great. And, and being for you yourself, being able to live your dreams and stuff like that is awesome. But it's like it, it frustrates me this um this constant thing, and I think that yeah. comes as a, you know, you brought up something, and I don't think it's corny at all, saying that you, if you had a daughter that, because you know what, it it's hard, and, I, and I've seen scary things happen, you know, being, being a young girl and, and, you know, just existing on the street is enough. I, I will never forget the first time that, you know, someone came up to, I was sitting, was walking with my mom and someone came up. I was thinking I was 12 or something. And my mom was, my mom went off on him because it it was just completely uncalled for. And women don't necessarily, you know, gawk at men like that in in a way it's, Mm -hmm. you know, it, so why does it happen? And, you know, because I am in like major, major metropolises all over the world all the time, I'm constantly surrounded by people and, you know, it's, it's summer season. So obviously, (laughs) and that kind of thing. And like, looking good, looking good, looking good, looking fresh, you know, (laughs) like, yeah. And there's nothing wrong with that. I'm not going to be wearing a parka in this country in the summer. Sorry. Um, but, the thing is what the, yeah it, it it how do you how do you deal with that and then i i was raised in a family of boys so i've i've heard it all i've seen it all there's not much else that i you know i i've got a pretty thick skin i'm 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 used to it and what does it mean for you know let's say a younger girl who you know is who's getting called at you know, by a group of five guys on the street kind of thing. It, it, yeah, it makes you uncomfortable. Oh, you know? yeah. It really, it truly, frankly, it really does. And it, it, is, it can be really annoying. And I, what I, what I would say to that is to, you know what, women have the right to wear what they want. And, you know, even, even if so, I've seen girls get called out when they're wearing sweatpants and what, like whatever, like nothing, nothing crazy. Um, just educate there's nothing wrong with complimenting someone but there's a way to do it yeah and i think that is where the education you know of younger males and again it goes into like the hip-hop community and what they see on tv and what they think is okay and what what they think is okay and how to treat a a woman and what they can say to her yeah it's there, there's some double double standards there, and I think um, if you, if you educate just younger people on how to say, okay, if you think that she looks nice, go up and do it in a way that's not going to terrify her. 
because you might actually appreciate it. And I've actually said, you know, speaking from experience, I've, I've gone up and said, well, you know what? Thank you very much. That's very sweet of you. It's coming from a genuine place. I don't feel threatened by this in any sort of way. And, you know, I'm glad I made your day kind of thing like that. There's, there's <laughs> a great, that, no, there's a, there's a grace, there's a graceful way to do it. it. It's just, it doesn't get done enough. And I don't know. Again, I think it starts with something small and it starts in a, in a sort of, in a smaller group, like in, in a family and it can continue from there. You know, you can, you can't change an entire society by changing an entire society. You change one person mm-hmm. sort of at a time. So that, that, that's, that's just such an interesting subject as well. Um, you know, edu- educate the younger men and, you know, women just hold, hold your head high and, and take care of yourself. You know, it, it's, you're not going to, you're not going to be able to necessarily avoid all of the atten- the attention, <laughs> but, just know that you you don't have to put up with something either that yeah. makes you feel uncomfortable. You have a right, Definitely. and and that's that's something that you know you if you don't want to deal with it, then don't deal with it. So definitely, guys, step your game up. <laughs> Come on, you know what? I, I'm really I'm really lucky to know amazing amazing men in my life. You know, I know some I've met some not so amazing ones, but I definitely <laughs> there are there are. Girls, there are not. They're not all bad. They're re- they're really they're really not. And uh, just just hold on to the ones that the, there's nice guys out there and be with the nice ones. They're better. They're way better. <laughs> Definitely, be with the ones that are gonna treat you right for sure. Treat you right, exactly. You know, yeah. And you know what? You forget about gender things. You shouldn't treat people. You should treat everyone with kindness. You know, it, mm-hmm. it shouldn't and respect. And and that's it. You know, it's not it's not even a gender thing. It's like you know, treat. We'll go back into the other conversation about girls picking on other girls, trying to get them to change themselves and that kind of thing. Treat each other with respect and be gr- grateful. You know, and appreciate people for who they are. So. Yes, yes, please. That I, we got to get off, but I want to add to that point again. Still, is like the people that show up. Like it, it's so weird how much beauty gets treated differently if it's if like um this one girl walks into the front desk and it's a guy who's behind the desk running the till or whatever and it's like not that attractive girl and he's like not in a good mood and he's just gonna uh, whatever here do this boom 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 and then if it's like a really stunning female that walks in he just like all of a sudden perks up like whoa okay what what would you need miss what uh, i'll help you with anything that you need you know what i mean and there's so much more attentive same thing if you have like uh $5,000 $5,000 car that you roll up in versus a $100,000 car that you roll up in and then people treat you start treating you completely differently based on, you know, the image that surrounds you. So I think, yes, you're 100% right. People, we need to just treat people with respect and kindness, no matter what they're looking like, what they're, what, what is in their wallet. Well, and the thing is, you know, you never know who people are. Some of the people who dress down the most on the street might be the wealthiest they, yes. people that you ever meet. Warren Buffett. Some people that are all flashy may have, you know, $50,000 in credit card debt that they're never even going to pay off. You know, so you never, <laughs> so ever, true. ever know. Go at, it, go, at it, go at it with a smile. You know, that, that that's what it is. And everyone has good days. Everyone has bad days. Some days you don't feel like smiling. But even just try it when you don't. When you're having a bad day, just sit up and actually just physically do the action of smiling. And it honestly can just make you feel better. And when you feel good, you look good. And that that's all I'm, I'm going to say for that. Beautiful. Great way to end it. I okay. like that. I like that. Awesome. Thank you so much, Kate, for doing the interview. Thank you. Appreciate it. Yeah, we'll definitely have to catch up in like uh, six six months to a year and, and see where uh, where your travels are taking this you. This might be this conversation could be in another country. I was supposed to be in London, but you know what? <laughs> we're 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 still in Canada for a bit. So next time you're out on the road, definitely we'll have to do that. Yes, that would be amazing. Thank you so much, Robbie.